Wrestling fans around the corner around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas with the egg rolls and chicken wings. Yo, fuck Tony Atlas. That boot licking motherfucker don't mean shit to me. And I hope that motherfucker dies slow. Kiss my motherfucking ass, you big head, goddamn Samba Simba looking motherfucker. Fuck you. Ha! From the original case of New Jack. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm New Jack. Wrestling inside is extreme, is now. Tickets are on sale now at bostonwrestling.com for our 20th anniversary back to the 80s WrestleFest, Saturday, November the 13th at Memorial Hall in Melrose, Mass. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome to another Wrestling Inside. It's our new series, Wrestling Inside is Extreme, where we look at the world of ECW and beyond with some of the superstars that created the mayhem that you loved in the glory days of the 1990s. So happy to be joined by a man. Uh, he has a very interesting reputation around the world of professional wrestling. Uh -huh. We call him New Jack. Jack yes. It's a pleasure to have you, brother. What's up, man? I'm telling you, you, you know, there were a lot of people that maybe uh, second guessed my choice at having you here with us. But as I noted on the program we did with a man whose name will come up shortly, um, when we had you work a live event for us back in 2002, Pleasure to work with. Easy. Right. I don't want to ruin your reputation. But. Of course not. <laughs> hmm. uh, we're going to be having a lot of fun, folks. This man has had a career well beyond outside the auspices of ECW. But what we like to do is with each new guest, just kind of catch up. What is going on in the world of New Jack? Right now in 2021, the world is absolutely insane with coronavirus. It changes no matter what state you go to, it seems. What's been happening with you over the past uh, 12, 13 months or so? I just been laying at the house chilling. I go and do appearances sometimes, sign autographs, take pictures. But other than that, I'm at home. And it hasn't, you mentioned in the car on the way here, you've been staying, had a pretty active schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do you attribute that to? There have been a lot of people that have been, and I don't want to name names, but they've been, they've been absolutely dead the past 13, 14 months as far as being able to get bookings go. Why have you stayed so hot? I'm worth money. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to see. And, and uh, now, how has this bad boy been going? I haven't had a chance to read this yet. I'm excited to read it. I've heard great things about it. It's tell selling us, good. It's it, doing good. It's selling good. Every we're, time somebody asks me a question, I tell them, buy the book. Well, that'll make for an interesting interview then. Every yeah. time I ask you a question, you say, by the book. By the book. <laughs> it's, it's, in, it's in the goddamn book. By the book. Now, did you write this yourself? Did you have a ghostwriter? I had a ghostwriter. You had a ghostwriter help? Yeah. Is it available, I imagine, on Amazon? Is it available other places as well? You can buy it on my website. And what is the website? Theonlynewjack.com. Theonlynewjack.com. Yeah. Not to be confused with those fake ones. No. Well, I'm anxious to check it out. As you can tell, we like wrestling books here at the studio. Um, again, great to have you here. The folks have asked for you. They've wanted you. It's a little bit different than what we usually do. Uh, the insanity we have with Marty Gennetti on Thursday night is a, a sight to behold. Uh, Oscar from Men on a Mission, the rapper, he certainly added some interesting insight to mid-90s. He's w still around? We, he's with us every Monday night. Is he? he every Monday night, baby. Tell him I say what's up. I, we'll, we'll tell him <laughs> on the next episode. He's I a like good him. egg. He's a good egg. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday night, we have uh, what we call Special Edition, where we have rotating guests. Recently, we had Father James Mitchell with us, uh, TJP, Demolition Smash, the list goes on and on. And then every Friday night, we have a man I was, I don't want to say surprised, was such a huge fan of yours, but I really didn't expect it. Uh, the, the pop that he gave when I told him you were coming, mm -hmm. John Cena Sr. Do yeah. you remember where you might have met him? No. No. <laughs> it had to have been at one of those fan fest type yeah, events. Yeah, it had to have been. He was really excited that you were coming to join the team and, and test the waters out with us on the show. So, yeah. You know, when everybody gets along, it's a great thing. But then we have the gaping hole that is Tuesday night, which was 
what we call the Tuesday nights with Tony. Wrestling inside is at your house. Fuck uh, that nigga, man. Well, uh, <laughs> and then there's that. <laughs> Mr. USA Tony Atlas, my longtime friend going back to 1993 when I met him as a 13-year-old freshman in high school working for Tony Rumble, took his stimulus check, bought a little $200 Chromebook computer, and thinks he's going to be a millionaire up in Maine with it now doing the show himself, bullshitting people after claiming for years I helped him pay his mortgage many months, claiming he was only getting $55 every time he came here. That's, em that's embarrassing. Spending $90 on a rental car. Now, my thing is, it is complete and utter bullshit, but even if it was true, why on earth would you ever admit that and look that foolish to any person that read it? That boot licking ass nigga can kiss my ass. I ain't got shit good to say about Tony Adams. Tony Adams don't mean shit. If you, ha, have you ever seen a kid dressed up as Saba Simba? <laughs> no. Have you? No. Okay. Tony Adams goes back to when I was a kid. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden he left WCW, NWA, whatever the fuck, and, be, and became when the when the events and let them dress him up as a motherfucking spear chucking, boot lick kissing ass nigga called him Salva Simba. You know what I mean? And I ain't got no respect for that motherfucker, none whatsoever. Tony Adams can suck a dick. I didn't know that there was this heat. I had knew nothing about it. The fans said, why ain't you talking to Tony about New Jack? Why ain't you talking to Tony about New Jack? So I said, you know what? We're going to talk to Tony about New Jack, where he was with us at that point weekly every Tuesday night. And it was a very odd response from him. He was odd on the show. I think you, you said you've actually seen it. Yeah. And then afterwards, I think he was kind of angry with me that I didn't side with him. But I can only give an honest assessment. When we had you on our event, you were very easy to work with. And I don't know if he wanted me to say negative things. I could only go by my experience with you the first go around. Right. So how did it all begin? I mean, Tony, on the program, as you watch, said there was a confrontation. I don't know if it was at a fan fest or an independent wrestling show. Or what, what happened, Jack? I did a shoot one time, and I talked about Tony Atlas. Where they were talking about Bruiser Bellum. I mean, I'm sorry, Bruiser Brody. Right. You know what I mean? And I said some shit about him, and he came to the show, the autograph signing, and he asked me about it. And I said, Yeah, I said it. I said, I always talk about people. I talk about my mama. I don't give a fuck. I talk about people all the time. You know what I mean? So he asked me about it, and I told him. So then he was like, Well, well, young brother. You just, you just need to be cool. And I'm like, man, fuck you. You, you know what I mean? I'm like, fuck you. I, was, I, was, I ain't got to be cool shit. I said, you ain't nothing to me. You ain't nothing. He ain't shit. That nigga ain't shit. Ray Candy told me there was two people, black people, in this business not to fuck with. Abdul the Butcher and Tony Evans. He said, ain't neither one of them worth about shit. You know what I mean? So I treated him... Just like he came to me and was talking that silly ass shit, I was like, dude, I don't give a fuck about you. You know what I mean? Never. I got fans that got tattoos of me on their body. The girlfriends got tattoos of me on their fucking ass and on their titties and all kind of shit. You ever seen a Tony Adams tattoo? Fuck no. <laughs> I haven't seen too many Mr. USA tattoos, but... Where is it that this comes from? Was it that your, I, I guess Ray Candy maybe would be best described as a mentor and a, yeah. a trainer towards you? Was it just his opinion towards Tony that influenced you? Or was it Saba Simba that turned you off to him? Or were there other personal interactions? Mark Henry was on Vlad TV. And he said that Vince wanted him to be the silverback gorilla. And he was like, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? He had a choice. And he didn't do it. And he stuck around for a long time. Sure did. Tony Atlas comes up <laughs> from Mr. USA, my dick, Tony Atlas. And then all of a sudden, he's Saba Simba. And he got a spear going to the ring. He ain't got no shoes on. He got a shield in his hand. And I'm like, what the fuck? 
That nigga set black people back 400 years in this business. And I ain't got no respect for him. I don't give a fuck about him. I swear to God. It, it ain't nothing that that nigga can say to me. It ain't shit you can say to me. I will play devil's advocate for one second. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the fact that Tony was homeless uh, about a year before the Saba Simba creation happened. He uh, was working for the ICW Savoldi family. Uh, they kind of went out of business. They stranded him up in Maine. He had nowhere to go. So he actually lived under a, a bench up in Maine until his now wife found him under the bench and brought him home and cleaned him up. Um, so you're talking about a man that was desperate for work. Apparently, according to Tony at least, Ole Anderson had come up with an idea uh, where they were going to dye his hair gray and he was going to do a confrontation with Ric Flair down in the NWA, and they were going to have a little program. Apparently, Mario Savoldi, or one of the Savoldi family members, found out about that since they were tight with the WWF, went and told Vince. Vince brought him in right around the same time as Undertaker, and that's how Sabasim became to be. Now, can you fault them? I know you don't think much of what he did, but can you fault the man for trying to get any work he could get where he, um, a year before he was living under a park bench in Maine? Like I said, he set black people back 400 years. You know what I mean? Because they don't do that shit to white people in this right. business. They don't do it. You know what I mean? They, they just, they don't do it. They don't dress them up like they're coming off the Mayflower. Right. With a whip in their hand. Yeah, right. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when, when, when they gave that shit, Tony had it, as big as his name was back in the day, and all of a sudden, he comes to the ring now dancing and shucking and jiving and spear chucking and got his goddamn shield up in the air. And I'm like, who is this nigga? And I ain't had no respect for him since that. You know what I mean? I ain't had no respect for him, none. And I was just like, this motherfucker need to be shot. You know, <laughs> he can talk about me all day long, but it don't mean shit because I'm going to talk shit back. You know what I mean? I'm the biggest shit talker in this motherfucking business. I'm going to talk shit back. And I ain't scared of no goddamn body. Nobody. So his amateur background certainly isn't something that worries you, I guess, at this point. Well, he wasn't amateur then. I mean, he was he was fucking WCW. I mean, WWE and WWF, whatever the fuck. But like I said, what he did is the whole Saba Simba thing. What it, it's bad enough for black people today in this business. You know what I mean? We still getting the goddamn bullshit gimmicks to this day. Right. They got them coming out eating cereal and dancing and shucking and jiving and yo baby, yo baby, yo, and all that bullshit. And then for this nigga to come up and come out as a motherfucking African, a Saba Simba, he's a simple motherfucker. I don't give a fuck about him. Please show him this. Oh, he'll say it. Please show it to him. Other, if it was not for Saba Simba, would you have this issue with him? No. You respected his career to some extent before then? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. We got the first time cue from John C. I, I, I just, I think it's too bad. I, I think it's great when everybody gets along. But like I said, to I have never seen Tony as awkward as he was after we taped that episode. As you probably saw, he threatened to get up and leave the studio. He didn't even, that's how little he wanted to talk about you. And I, I, watched the, I watched a little bit of it. Uh -huh. I didn't, I, my, my wife was cracking the fuck up. You know what I <laughs> mean? She was like, baby, you got to see this. I said, I don't want to see that shit because it was him. Yeah. He was a country backwood motherfucker. He, he, I mean, when he talked, he, well, yeah, I meant the Tony Atlas and uh, Bruiser Brodies and all these other motherfuckers, and I'm the Tony Atlases, and I'm like, fuck that nigga. Fuck him. You think he tries to cling to that story a little bit? Too much? Is, have you ever just listened to him talk? I've, li I've spent eons listening to him talk. English wasn't one of his better subjects in school. <laughs> You're right. You know what I'll I mean? I'll give you that one. It wasn't one of his better subjects in school. You know, and then he sits around and he draws all these pictures and he makes a little $20 for a picture he draws and then he get copies ran off and he sells them and they're of Vince McMahon and The Undertaker. 
Motherfucker, where are your skills at? You know what I mean? Where are your skills? These motherfuckers, he, they gave him that motherfucking the Hall of Fame ring because he was a motherfucking charity case. You know what I mean? He didn't do shit. He was a goddamn charity case. Vince felt so, the Hall of Fame is, is a work any goddamn way. You know what I mean? But he felt sorry for that nigga. And he gave him that bullshit. And he walks around with it. I'm surprised he ain't pawned it. Yeah, he wouldn't be the first to do that. I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I think that ring does mean an awful lot to him. I'll say that. He's had many big money offers for it, but he has yet to sell it. As far as his artwork goes, I mean, do you think he should stick to certain things? I know he has a nice one of Abraham Lincoln he's drawn and uh, uh, Adam and Eve. And so he, he, he tries to come up with some interesting subjects beyond current WWE superstars. I walked by his table one day at a signing. <laughs> And I just took a peek at what he was doing. <laughs> and I was like, where did they find this nigga at? <laughs> you know, I was like, seriously, where in the fuck did they find this nigga at? He talked about Rocky Johnson like a dog. And Rocky Johnson came to that motherfucker's eight we didn't have shit. I did my homework. You know what I mean? And he talks about all the, he, he talks about everybody. You know what I mean? When he started attacking me, after what, when we were at that with the girl sign, and he came up to me, and he said something, and I said something back, and I was like, yeah, I talk about people all the time. I talk about my mama. I don't give a fuck. I talk about you. If I see something you're doing wrong, I'm going to talk about it. And with him, that nigga don't mean nobody no good. He don't give a fuck about nobody. Nobody. Well, we learned what happened here on this show that took very good care of him for four years, and then once he bought his $200 Chromebook, I don't know if, who typed the message that went on Facebook, whether it was him or his friend, but I, I've never seen such bullshit in my life for a man that, again, dozens of times said we helped pay his mortgage. Then all of a sudden the claim was, well, no, well, I was only making $55 every time I came down from Maine. You talk about a crock of shit. That's why as much as there's a part of me that genuinely cares about Tony as a human being, I have no problem letting someone unload on him now because I thought that was such a disrespectful thing. Even if he didn't type it and write it himself, he obviously knew about it because it was on his, his pewter, as he calls it. Right. His $200 pewter. <laughs> I got my pewter. <laughs> The money I'm going to make off my eye on my pewter. Yeah. But I just mean, it was just like, fuck, this is a guy I went out of my way. That money I could have spent on taking my kids to on a fucking vacation, and I'm going to fucking help him out, and then he's going to put on the internet. Uh, he was getting $55 every time he came here. Again, even if it was true, he sounds like a fucking idiot for coming out and saying it. Right. Because he didn't do it just once. He didn't do it twice. He did it for four years. For $55, apparently, each time. And that paid his mortgage. That's what aggravates me. Because when I'm good to someone, I try and be good to everybody. When I was broken in, I was taught this is a quote-unquote brotherhood. And while everybody's always going to jockey for the best position to try and make the most money, you should always try and look after each other. And right. I always believe that. I don't know if you're familiar with the Cauliflower Alley Club, but we do a lot of work with them. Uh, as far as trying to raise money for the vets and the old timers with medical bills, uh, funerals sometimes, unfortunately. And, you know, I, I just, where I've known Tony so long and I felt so bad for his situation, his wife suffered a stroke back in 2019. She's been hospitalized ever since. He lost her income for a Social Security check other than $40 goes to the facility that she's at. Then coronavirus hit. He lost his uh, full-time job as a personal trainer at the YMCA and he lost the majority of his bookings. I went above and beyond to try and help the guy. And Tony, I know you're probably gonna see a link to this, and it's nothing that I haven't said as, as you've ignored my text messages and my phone calls for the money that we're still trying to work out that you've been paid up front for things that haven't been done. That's a different story for a different time too. But you know, Tony, as a human being it hurts. New Jack's opinion is New Jack's opinion, but. 
I, I guess it was Saba Simba that set you over the edge. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was. No, fair enough. I can respect that. It, and I say this, I can't look at life through your eyes, obviously. I, it would be insulting to you for me to even try and do so. But I can understand the point of view where it would be insulting, where you say it took the race back several hundred years just by doing it and coming out and making a fool out of right. himself. and it was for a payday, and, it was, and I'm sure it was low. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. I'm sure it was low. And he didn't know? even last six months. But he was just <laughs> happy to be with Vince, Mr. Vince McMahon. So I sure will lick your nuts, Mr. McMahon. Fuck you! All right, wrestling fans, with that said, I got the time cue from John C. We're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with more Wrestling Inside is Extreme with New Jack. Stand by. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay per view, watch alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. Ah, uh, see ya. <laughs> Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as hell. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> Ooh, cheer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside is Extreme. Happy to be joined by New Jack, new friend of the show. Hopefully this is going to turn into a long-term proposition. I think you have so many stories, experiences, opinions. Yep. I think it's going to make for some captivating interviews. We're already talking about having Jack back in just a few weeks here at this humble abode. So I, I have high expectations for what we're going to do. You mentioned Tony and Rocky Johnson. Now, that set off a bell in my head. Uh, Tony had claimed many times on this show, and this is something I think, obviously, with your race, you can actually answer much better than I could. He said the only people that he ever suffered racism from in wrestling were other black wrestlers. Would you agree with that sentiment? No. 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 <laughs> because... Dude, like I said, when I, got, when I got in the business in 92, I had created my own gimmick. The whole Raiders gear, the high-tech booth, the fucking rap t-shirts and all that shit, I created it and I stuck with it because Ray Candy told me he said, if you stick with this, he said, you're going to make some money. All right? He said, you're going to make some money. But then he warned me of a few people. It was, and it's more than just Tony Adams and Abdullah. But those were the main two that he warned me about. He said, don't ever do business with those two motherfuckers. He said, don't ever. And I didn't know him. Personally, at the time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I met Abdullah, and he was like, "I'll take you to Japan. 
you dress like me, and we'll be a tag team. You mean as far as like those pants go? He those wanted pants you to... and them goddamn boots. And he wanted me to dress like, I'm like, nigga, you lost your mind. He wanted you to reinvent yourself. Yeah. Yeah. As his little creation. Sidekick. Like, come on, man. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Did Ray Candy give you any reason why you should stay away from Tony? Because he said he was bad news. Really? Yeah. I have to say, from 1993 to 2011, he was a pretty good guy. Up in, I'm, to, I'm sorry, 2021, he was a pretty good guy. I mean, for 28 years, we had some, we had really good interactions on a personal basis outside of this. But just what's gone on the past couple of months is just, it, it, he should be embarrassed as a human being, knowing how much I tried to do to help him right. pay his bills, and then to put complete and utter bullshit that he, whether he typed it which I can't imagine he could type that long, or whoever it was that he has helping on his Facebook, on his pewter, he should be ashamed of himself. I couldn't imagine pissing on someone that helped me pay my bills during coronavirus and then say, fuck you, you paid me $55. His mortgage was $55 a right. month? Where the fuck is he living? <laughs> I'm a dog you know what? <laughs> Honestly, where is he living for fifty-five dollars a payday that I'm paying the mortgage? Right. Honestly, that's what gets me. You know what? And you know what? Maybe a simple apology would do. You know, everybody can be moody. Everybody, you know, he's got some stressful times. If my wife was in the hospital going on two years now, it might fuck with my head. You know what I mean? That would hurt, especially now where he hasn't really been able to see her other than two or three times since the virus hit. Mm. But at the same time, you don't fuck your friends over. Right. and embarrass them and try and humiliate them. There are strangers that don't know me that obviously are gonna, they, they're going to want to side with the superstar wrestler that they love from TV. They don't know me as a human being and the things I've tried to do to help him. And I get that. I mean, I, I got a lot of nasty messages from fans, but I tell you this, I responded to each and every one of them with the facts, and I put a video out with the facts. So I just hope Tony does the right thing with the money that he was paid up front in advance to do the things he was supposed to do, which I'll leave at that without going into too many details. And I hope that someday, when he has a chance to sit back and reflect when maybe life is a little more calm, and he realizes he's not going to make a million dollars on Facebook on his pewter, that maybe he owes me an apology. <laughs> a pewter. Now, now I gotta, <laughs> that's how he says it, his pewter. A pewter. <laughs> $200 pewter. <laughs> um, that was oh, his, shit. thank you, Joe Biden. That was his stimulus check. <laughs> now, another guy, he's never really had much to do with our organization, but I got to know him a bit when I worked for Tony Rumble's a CWA, NWA, New England. Abdullah the Butcher has been another one on your hit list. What is it about Abby? Was it just this Japan incident that you took issue with? Him? Abdullah came to me one day, and he said, I'll take you to Japan, and I'll charge you 35% of your pay. Who do you think he was, boy? <laughs> And the whole Ray Candy thing was right in my head, fresh in my head. I was like, no, bro, I don't want to go that bad. So then Paulie told me to ask him to come work me in ECW. He said, but tell him he got to do the job. Abdul would do the job? Yeah. Okay. And when I told him, he was like, I can't do it. It'll fuck up my book. It's in Japan. I said, ECW is in Philly. I said, how is it going to fuck up your boogers in Japan? He was like, it just will. Then he started trying to say, I tried to copy his gimmick. Because of the fork? I guess. I mean, I used a fork one time. A fan brought it and gave it to me. I wouldn't think about that dude. And I use it in a match. All of a sudden, it became big, and I started using it. And he was not in my head at the time I was doing it. But he said, because of the fork, I tried to copy his style. Because of my gig bars, I'm trying to look like him. How many people have those? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, 
He said something one time. When I had asked him about having hepatitis, he said, no, I don't have that. I said, but you're being sued by a couple of people for testing positive with HC and then hep C and then you got them getting color and you using the same blade on them. I said, no, I will never work you. I think we did a, we did a three-way one time with me, him, and Sandman. Oh, you did work him at one point? Yeah. Really? Okay. But when he got color, I powdered. Really? I left him and Sandman in the ring. I said, I want no part of that. You know what? I don't know why the man hasn't come out if he's clean and said, here is my test. I'm 100% clean. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where he's been attacked and vilified. I mean, I'll tell you this. If someone vilified me, like almost like my situation with, uh, I've mentioned with Tony over and over again, that I tested positive for hep C as a result of working him because he was so cheap, and he was a cheap man, if nothing else, right. um, using the same blades on the same people over and over again. No, no, even if he is clean, that's disgusting. Right. But why wouldn't you come out and tell people or just say, you know, here are my sheets. I, am, I have tested negative on May 8, 2021, or whatever the date may be. It would only help his cause, I think. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot of people that want, not that he's very active right now at his age, but I think it would help his cause. Yeah. Yeah. It would have, but like I said, that's just him. He's a nasty motherfucker. And when he talked about me, I went back at him. I actually went down to his Chinese restaurant. Did you? In Atlanta. Well, I, used to, I was living in Atlanta. Okay. I stopped by there, and I, and I asked him. He was sitting out in the front on, in the chair, and I said, you got a problem with me? And he's like, no, champ, what are you talking about? I said, I keep hearing shit. And if you got a problem with me, let's face this shit now. No, champ, we straight. What's up, me? I said, no, I don't want that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like, with, with that being said, I left that nigga alone. I left him alone. You might have saw it, but I did this little cartoon video, me and Ari video. A cartoon? Yeah. Like an illustration? It's a cartoon. It's called Little New Jack. And I'm talking about Abdullah. They actually got Tony Atlas sitting at the bar. <laughs> I have to see this. You got to see it. It is like the funniest <laughs> shit I've ever done. I have to see this. Dude, that shit was funny as fuck. I thought, I thought it was. You know what I mean? But it was just like, that was my answer to Abdullah. You know, because I was like, I ain't never said nothing bad about that motherfucker up until that point. So you heard that he made these comments on some kind of a shoot interview, or? Somebody told me. Someone told you, yeah. They, they told me they read it. And then they showed it to me. And I read it. I was like, oh, he did say that. I said, I get it. But I went to his restaurant. I love the fact that he had the balls just to show up at his restaurant. And he was sitting out on his the chair in front of it, yeah. which it makes it even for a better story. Yeah. It's not like he was in the back. He was sitting out front with no way to go. And I addressed the, the, the subject, you know what I mean? Did he seem nervous when you showed up? Yeah. <laughs> but I got out the car, he was like, hey, champ. Oh, so he recognized you immediately? Yeah. yeah. He knew me. But I wasn't going to let that shit go, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said... Abdullah ain't shit. He's a no. He ain't shit. He ain't never been shit, and he never will be shit. He ain't. He gonna die a lonely ass old man. He ain't shit. And you know, I, I think what you just said really registers. I don't think his end of life is gonna be the best. Mm -mm. I'm sure he saved he, how cheap he was. I'm sure he saved almost every penny he ever made in Japan and other places he worked. But um, you know, he, he's. There's a community of people that dislike him a great deal yeah. because of what's gone down. And like I said, I think if it was me, I think you could resolve the issue pretty simple if you went to the doctor's office, had the test done, 
and had a piece of paper that says, I am negative, I am clean. Right. But that's just my opinion. I don't yeah. know. I, I thought he was all right, other than the fact was, I thought, he, I, could, I don't think I've ever seen anyone as cheap as him. I don't know if you ever had to deal with them in that way. You know, the thing is, I asked the, in my brain, if I'm one of these guys, why would you get in the ring with him if you, A, why would you get in the ring with him if you knew he had a dirty blade? B, why wouldn't you just fucking go and get your own? I know I would. I mean, I wouldn't want to risk that. That motherfucker would cut people and them not even knowing they were getting ready to get color. Really? He would just do it. He'd just do it? Yeah. I mean, that's away from the our crazy bubble of professional wrestling. That's fucking assault. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could go to jail for doing yeah, something like that. But he Imagine did. Imagine walking down the street and just gigging someone. Somebody, <laughs> somebody just killed me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll say this, to his credit, he was very, very skilled at it, the way he'd do it with the little moves with the mm -hmm. hands and so on and so forth. And maybe it was easy for him to try and do it. But the fact that he'd do that, use the same, it's just filthy. Yeah. It's just a filthy human being to do that. Yeah. Um, we've met some unsavory people in this crazy industry, if, if, if nothing else. You know, the one thing I'll give you credit for as we head into this time out, I don't want to name the name, but maybe the most unsavory was of the female variety. But I don't even want to touch that one in more ways than one. In more ways than one. <laughs> I tell you this. If I guess, I bet I get it right. Yes. <laughs> From you to even a sweetheart like Deborah McMichael. Do you, do you know Deborah? Yeah. I, I don't want to get too much into it because it's a long story for a different time. But we had her come in, and I said, you know, as much as John Cena Sr. loves to have the women in, I really started to shy away from them. And I explained the whole experience. And Deborah, being so sweet from down in Alabama, she went, does her first name begin with a T? <laughs> <laughs> and the last name began with an R? Yeah, you nasty bitch. We know, you know what we talking about. <laughs> oh, imagine what when we... Jesus. Imagine when we open the beverages, the fun we'll have. Right now, we're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with New Jack to wrap up the show. Oh, do I hate that. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer. Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves. You got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out. Here's your chance to own a piece of history from the 2020 WWE Draft. On the second night, October the 12th, The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and Alexa Bliss unleashed hell on Andrade and Zelina Vega. This limited edition 11x14 collector's poster is number 26 of only 50 made, personally signed by both The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, direct from friends at WWE. Comes with Certificate of Authenticity hologram on the poster itself, suitable for framing. You'll also receive a bonus autographed mystery photo and an on-air shout-out as our thanks to you. Get this all rare autograph fiend and Alexa Bliss poster now. Wrestling fans, especially here in the Boston area, we want to thank our great friends at Red Rose for their support for all of our charitable endeavors and programming efforts. Red Rose is two years young and extremely thankful for all the support they've had from our neighbors here in Melrose and beyond for an amazing first two years. Red Rose thanks Melrose and all of the first responders who have fought the good fight and have never given up hope during these unprecedented times. We did it together. Follow Red Rose on Facebook for their anniversary special, facebook.com backslash Red Rose Melrose. You'll be glad you did. Open until 2 a.m. Red Rose will give you fresh, piping hot, mouth-watering food that'll put an ear-to-ear -ear smile on even the toughest critic's face. Check out their full menu online at redrosema.com or give them a call 781-620-1889. Wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside is Extreme, a more uh, adult-themed version of the show. Uh, Jack and I had a chance to, to reminisce about a certain individual that I detest. I don't know about him, but I'm sure that'll come up down the road. Uh, again, as many longtime fans know, I've hinted at this. I don't even want to call her a woman several times, but the worst experience we've ever had the only person that's ever held us up for money. I, 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 oh, oh. 
that's going to make for maybe the mother of all episodes, the day that Jack and I share our experiences. But anyway, we had one more guest, a man, that, another one that isn't a great fan of yours. He was actually part of our Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks a toy drive last year, Nasty Boy Brian Nobbs. Now, where, where, where do the issues with Brian Nobbs come from? We did a showdown in Florida. No, I came to the show because my buddy was running it, so he asked me to stop by, and I did. So I go in the dressing room, and Nob is burying everybody. And these are young guys. I mean, they look up to us. Nob is burying everybody. Talking about their match, talking about how bad they were, they sucked. They couldn't get the fans to co op and participate with them, what they were doing. They were just fucking terrible. I was like, God damn, that's kind of harsh. So, I was texting somebody on my phone. And they sent me a text back, and I started laughing at the text. While Nas was sitting there giving his speech. So he looked at me, and he was like, New Jack, what you laughing at? You can't wrestle. I said, you talking to me? He's like, yeah, you can't wrestle. I took my pinky ring off. <laughs> I laid my phone down. And I got up and walked over to him and hit him. One punch. You hit him? Where'd you punch him? The In face? the face. Mm. One punch. He was laying on his back. And I jumped on him. I had on some Timberlands. I started kicking that motherfucker in the head. And every time he would try to pick him up, I'd knock him back down. So they broke it up. He went back to the bar, bleeding, shirt torn. A couple weeks later, I get this message from Bubba the Love Sponge. You know what that is? Yeah, the radio host in Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody told me, they said, Jack, don't do that interview with Bubba. He said, him and Nob and Hogan are like butt buddies. He said, if you do it, he's going to try to embarrass the fuck out of you. Well, I said, he's not that far from where I live. So I got in my truck. And I drove down to the studio. To Bubba the Love Sponge studio? Yeah. OK. I called him out up the street at Waffle House. He got on the phone and said, what's up, Jack? You ready? I said, yeah. I said, open the front door. <laughs> He was like, what are you talking about? I said, I'm right around the corner, open the front door. I pulled up, bubbled like he saw a goddamn ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and at first he tried to turn heel. He tried to go heel on me. Oh, really? Yeah, at first he did. How so? He said, Something, and he tried to call me a bitch. And Bubba I looked, the love sponge? Yeah. Really? Okay. I looked at him. I said, Bubba, I will kick your fat ass all around this goddamn studio. And I had a knife in my pocket. And he saw it. I, I act like the knife fell out of my pocket. But I actually pulled it out and let it hit the floor. Just so we know. Yeah. So then he's like, oh, we got New Jack in the studio, and we want to hear his side of the story. What happened to him and Nobbs? So he was supposed to call Nobbs, and Nob was supposed to be on the radio with him on the phone and me in the studio. But once Nob heard I was there, 
he wouldn't answer the phone. He wouldn't even answer the phone? No. Really? So Bubba was like, well, we're trying to get Brian Nautilus on the phone, but we seen it. We, we can't get him on the phone. And he, he tried to call him like 30 times, and he would never answer the phone. But then, like any other kind of fucking pussy, he goes on the internet and starts cutting promos. He called me nigga. You he know. used the word? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And he, I don't like he, that. he was just going, just, just, just going, just having a ball. I showed up at a signing. <laughs> and it was him and his partner. <laughs> and I walked in. He said, Jack, we all right? No, I've said you. this. No, I've said that to you. Yeah. Okay. He said, we all right? I said, fuck you. And his partner was like, I don't even know his fucking name, whatever. Jerry fucking... Sag. Yeah. He was like, leave him alone. He said, just leave him the fuck alone. He said that to you or Nobs? To Nobs. Oh, to Nobs, okay. He said it to Nobs. He said back, he was like, I don't have no problem. Jerry's an easy guy to get along with. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But that's what happened. What is the background to this grotesque picture that I have seen? Where Brian, <laughs> you saw looks that? Like, you know what it reminds me of? You know when a kid goes down a water slide and they come out the hole at the end? Some, a kid could have gone in Brian Nobbs' mouth and come out that fucking hole like it was a water slide. <laughs> he called himself being, being funny. He was trying to tell me to kiss his ass. That wasn't an ass. <laughs> that motherfucker's butthole was this big. It was, oh my God, it looked like a woman after she gave birth. It yeah. Awful. Awful. I took that picture and put it up on Facebook as my profile <laughs> picture. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put it, I shared it. Uh huh. And everybody was getting that picture. He called me. He was like, New Jack, brother, what's going on? I said, like, Who's this? Brian Nobbs. Who the fuck you want? He said, That picture. I said, You shouldn't have sent it to me. I said, What the fuck did you think I was going to do with that picture? Frame it? <laughs> <laughs> You've got some very interesting pictures in that phone. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if smartphones existed during the ECW era. My God. Yeah. You'd need a. They wouldn't have enough storage. On oh the boy. For the one you'd need. <laughs> I know. I know. So was that the end of it after that phone call? Or? I never heard anything else from him. After he sent you that pic. Now, did he tell you on the phone why he sent you a picture of this grotesque asshole? No, he just asked me why. Was I posted it? Because it was on Twitter, it was on it was Facebook, everywhere. it was, it was everywhere. everywhere. I put it everywhere. It was just like the one of Casper the Friendly Ghost bleeding. It was everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you certainly get your revenge on getting, I mean, I could not imagine getting a picture of an ass that looked like that sent to my phone. Yeah. And I think it was just desserts that you said, you know what, fuck them. It's gonna I bother. saw that picture, I was like, it looked inhuman. God damn. It was like a horror movie. And something was like, go to Facebook. <laughs> and I went straight to Facebook and put that as my profile picture. They banned, banned me from Facebook for 30 days. I was just going to say that. I'm surprised Facebook didn't suspend you. They, they did for 30 days. But I swear to God, I posted that picture. I did it. I did it. I'll, if he sent me another one, I'll do it again. If she, if, if she sent me some more, I'd do it again. I respect you for the fact that, you know what? You don't let people fuck with you. And if they do, fuck them right back. <laughs> Honestly, I do. And, you know, that's probably the biggest problem that John Cena Sr. and I have, where he tries to get me to, to see the light. Uh, and I respect, and I love John Cena Sr. for that. He's a good, decent human being. But in this business, we come across so many unsavory individuals, right. scum, if you will, Sometimes they need that fuck you back at them. And, and you are very, very good. It, <laughs> you are very good at giving them the old fuck you. 
And I know. that's why I think this series is going to be so much fun and we're going to have so many laughs. Again, it is not meant for children and most women. Uh, again, we leave it at your discretion. We'll put up a, discre a disclaimer at the front of the show. But I, I, three individuals, unique individuals, Tony, Abdullah, and Brian Nobbs, issues with all of them. If you had to interact with one of them, which one do you think you could tolerate the most? Neither one. None of them. Neither one. Of them. I hate all of them. <laughs> when you pop into them at fan fest type things or even independent shows nowadays, do you bother with them? I don't see them. I just walk by. Sometimes that's the easiest way. You know what I mean? But to Tony was on one with me in Tampa when y'all were down there. Oh, you guys were on one of the same things? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I we, didn't know we that. We were sitting like three people apart. Uh huh. And I got him walk by. And I kind of looked at him and just shook my head. I went to the bathroom. And Terry, oops. Oh, <laughs> that, that gutter pig was there too? <laughs> she was sitting oh. about two people from him. Yeah, she was probably in the bathroom stalls trying to see who hadn't showered in a week. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oops. <laughs> Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, bitch. <laughs> so you had all, that and Tony were both at this yeah. event? Yeah. Uh, and did you speak to Tony? You just walked by. I didn't say shit to him. No. Now he told me, and I don't know if this was true or not, but I don't know if I mentioned it. Um, during the interview we did with him, he said, eliminate me from your shtick. Did he ever say that to you? When you did have that confrontation? No, he didn't. Just wanted to set the record straight. He never said that. He, and if he said he said it, he's a goddamn lie. He did not say that. And you know what's funny? Up until about two months ago, I probably would have taken his word. But now I don't because of the bullshit that went on with me and him. And hmm. again, it's, it's a shame that it happened because all I have ever honestly wanted to do is help give him some work Get him some bookings, unlike those, you know, the super agents of the world in independent wrestling. Every booking I ever set up for him, I never took one fucking penny. I'm like, and you know, most of them try and get 15, 20% right. or whatever. I, and another unappreciated fucking gift that I gave him for my time, trying to set them up for him and try. Eh, it's just sad. I don't want to get mad and put it, shoot on him too much. But you know what? Sometimes when you're an asshole, you deserve it. And yeah. you are the master of putting people in their place when they become that asshole. I sure will. All right, wrestling fans, this is just episode one. Think of the fun and the laughs we've had. If you are easily offended, I apologize. You ain't seen shit yet. This may not be the series for you, but it's certainly going to be the series for us. I got a lot of good vibes off of this guy. I liked him a lot in 2002 when he worked a live wrestling event for us. D despite what some people thought, I had no quorums about bringing him to the studio. And then to hear that John Cena Sr. was so happy and so excited, it made me feel even better. So for our new friend, New Jack, I'm Dan Marotti. This is episode one of Wrestling Inside is Extreme. We'll see you next week. Until we speak again, folks, you and yours, be well, stay healthy. Head on over to the only new Jack talk. Please. Get this bad boy, baby. You're going to love it. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Please give the video a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel to enjoy more great content. Don't forget, you can help keep wrestling legends working. Check out our eBay store and join the Boston Wrestling family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling so we can produce more in-depth shoot interviews.